Hey again guys and welcome back. I am excited like a kid in a candy store because I got another package from another maker and I'm still thanking him for the last package which I haven't done enough of the stuff he sent but he was kind enough to send another one. Um, you guys should really go over to his channel and hit subscribe and tell him thanks because if you look Shipping to shipping stuff to me is not cheap. He paid uh, fifty-two dollars, and that is not Canadian Copex. Those are Freedom dollars. So let's open this package from the Plaguelands. He has not told me what is in here, so I don't know. This will all be sort of. You guys will be learning at the same time as me. Oh boy. There's a note. Mr. Simple. Oh, actually, I should say that he, uh, oh, I wrote over it. He put uh, small components here in the description, so that one hit uh, hit close to home, unfortunately. Mr. Simple, I'm loving your channel and your podcast. This is a box o randomness. It contains a few things that we've at least talked about tangential, tangi thanks, I can't, I can't pronounce words. That's good. Um, Hopefully you find some of it interesting. It's probably going to be all interesting. Thanks for the content and the encouragement. Another maker. Well, thanks. What do we have in here? Oh boy. All right. Right off the bat, we have a micro rover from Freenov. It looks like it's one of those uh, two motor sort of... Uh, Oh, it's for the the micro bit. Actually, yeah, he's been telling me I should get into micro bit. Look at that, and he includes the micro bit with it, I'm pretty sure. There it is. That's the BBC micro bit. So, being that I'm a education fanboy, he tells me that um, I should really get into um, dealing with the micro bit and microbit coding and microbit projects and that is definitely on the to-do list but I didn't have a microbit to play with. They're kind of expensive here in uh, Canada and I've been sort of schmoozing my way around to getting a review sample sent but this will do fantastic. Awesome! And so this is a completed rover. I'm not sure if it comes completed or if he built it and um, sent it over after. But yeah, it's one of these, it's got these little uh, geared motors on both sides, um, on these little wheels here, and it's got a little trapped ball bearing in order to track forward. And this card edge connector here, that's where the micro bit, the micro bit goes in. So that's pretty neat. Thankfully, I've got some 18650s thanks to um, uh, well, I guess I bought some which were pretty bad and uh, I got some sent to me, which is pretty awesome So that is good Well, I mean, oh this doesn't actually fit. Well, whatever away you go So this is going to be pretty cool to play with um, And especially because it's not built so I can't I can't do content Around it until I learn the micro bit itself. So it's a good way to force me to learn something is because uh, now I'm interested and uh, yeah, gonna have to do that. That's pretty cool. Next, we've got oh Jesus, so much I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Let's see. This is. So this is another set, this is, these are crimpers, easy RJ, I think these are um, RF crimpers, I think they're for insulated coax cable, let me see here, I know this is probably a reusable zip tie, but actually you know I'm probably going to draw blood if I try, if I try to do that, here we go. So already there's a bunch of cutting blades here and here and oh no this is probably for a network cable then is it for cat stuff I'll have to look that up 
it's for either RF or cat stuff because I see there's a little razor blade in this hole here so that looks like it's something for stripping the insulation off of like RJ45 sort of um, coaxial cable but then I see these things which are like keyholes so I feel like these are for um, some like Ethernet cable and stuff not a hundred percent sure there's pins on here people that know what they're talking about probably are looking at me like what the hell are you doing but yeah I'm not quite sure what these are for I'm gonna look these up and we're gonna check this out later in the video all right we've got a power adapter here that ends in a XT60 connector this is a uh, 12 volt 3 amp connector with an XT60. Now these are typically used to charge batteries or to supply power to battery chargers. This is actually a really good high current connector. So I'm wondering why he sent this. Might just be for the connector itself or it could be due to something in here. So we'll take a look. Let's see. Oh. You will probably use this more than I do. Okay. Look at that. We got a snap on ratchet. Very fancy. Is these are these the the multi like the 88 tooth or whatever? No, these are the coarse tooth. So this is actually an older Snap-on ratchet. That's pretty neat. Now, uh, Snap-on. The beauty with Snap-on is that you can actually warranty these things even today. It doesn't matter how old they are. They have an equivalent for you. So these things are super expensive uh, when you buy them off the truck. And uh, this one here is in really good shape. Looks like it was used by, you know, someone probably not a professional because I can't see a lot of wear on the on the, the side here. All I see is a little bit of wear on the sides of the head. So probably from being put down a few times. But for a snap-on ratchet, this thing is basically brand new. That's incredible. I actually, I have a really fancy uh, 3.8 drive um, Matco ratchet that I use on a daily basis and ratchets are one of these things where if you're going to be a professional um, you should spend a lot of money on a ratchet it's gonna last you forever this is one of the things you can spend money on and not regret it so this is awesome uh, we're actually gonna take this apart on a future video I think and do sort of like a junk from work style video where we're going to take a look at the insides and how these things tick and I think there's nothing special about the ratcheting mechanism in a snap-on ratchet it's just the quality of the materials and the um, the tolerances that these things are built and machined to that make these things so reliable so thank you for that if I wanted to buy one of these off the truck right now it probably cost me about 75 bucks Canadian. It's far less than that in the, the US, but still, this is an expensive piece. So thanks a lot for that one. That's, that's pretty awesome. Moving swiftly on. DVB-T FM D A. Oh, I think actually I think he's told me about this I believe this is an SDR dongle um, now you you guys may have to correct me if I'm wrong but I think this dongle is a software SDR yeah software defined radio dongle it's sort of like a, a, a dongle you can use with this little antenna here and you can program it you can tune it in the software to pick up, listen to, and send out all types of different signals. He has actually told me about these things and I have gone to take a look at them online. 
Um, I had I have just spent all my Patreon dollars and all the upcoming Patreon dollars for for quite a while. So it, it was on my list to get, but it, I wasn't quite ready for it yet. But yeah, these things are apparently a lot of fun. You can you can check out what your like car remotes are doing. You can check out what your what your um, uh, garage door opener is doing. You can uh, pick up communications or communicate to, I believe, something like an NRF chip. You can see what sort of uh, radio frequencies are are you know traveling through your house, and these things are actually not that expensive. I think in Canadian dollars they range somewhere between like fifteen and and a hundred and some dollars for for something like this. So that's going to be pretty cool to learn. Uh, I do have two weeks uh, vacation coming up very shortly, so I might put this on the short list to take a look at because apparently. SDR stuff is one of those things that is uh, easy to get started but difficult to master type things and I like the easy to get started stuff so yeah look forward to this kind of content in the near future that's pretty awesome what else do we have here randomness from Skycraft, oh yeah, Skycraft, if you haven't seen it, is a, um, sur it's like a surplus store almost, um, which is in, um, uh, another maker made a, a video of him going to visit that store. This is pretty cool, a 12 volt DC, I think this is an hour meter, uh, however, it's run up pretty high, I don't know if you can turn it manually, do a manual override with this little spinny thing back here. But I, I believe you hook this up to 12 volts and it will simply uh, count up continuously until you remove the 12 volts. And then every time you reapply it, um, then it'll start counting up again. And I believe, I can hook it up, but I, I, don't, I don't know if we're gonna see anything. Let me just get through the rest of this box and we'll, we'll hook it up and see what's going on. But that's a lot of hours. Uh, 999,950 hours. They probably replaced this because it was a like a sort of maybe it locks up when it gets all the way to max and they only had 50 hours left. That's pretty cool. Three bucks though and I think we can do a teardown of this. We'll see if it'll actually keep going. Pretty neat. Beta FPV. Interesting. Let's take a look. Ah, it's not actually from Beta FPV. Here we go. Uh, an Arduino Mega for an LED. I always make a joke that um, that another maker will use an Arduino Mega to flash an LED because uh, I think he was doing little projects with his uh, classrooms and they were using an Arduino Mega with an Ethernet shield to do like the simplest things. And in fact, the funny part about those simple things is that he was doing it all in Node Red anyways. So literally the Mega was just like looking at a couple buttons or something. So to continue the joke, he sent me a Arduino Mega for an LED, which is great. I might actually use this one in a 3D printer project just to show him what an, what an Arduino Mega is meant for. But Thanks to another maker, appreciate it. These things are actually quite pricey as well. What do we have here from Skycraft? So we have a few different LEDs. Um, these look like they are through hole, but they're meant for panels. If you look, yeah, look at these red LEDs and they sit on a little angled plate here and they point outwards and they just look like normal LEDs in a plastic molding. But that's pretty interesting. Um, so there's three of these. There's a few of these square LEDs and there's these other individual, these look like maybe, geez, these are tiny, maybe two mil LEDs and the same kind of plastic box. The, you'll see these things in like older VCRs and stuff where they sit like this and then the button comes up over here. So they, they put the button above or below or left or right and then this will shine through the button. We're going to we're going to power these up just for funsies shortly as well. 
That's pretty cool. Oh, and we have something from Beta FPV here. Well, at least it's in a Beta FPV. No, it is from Beta FPV. This is a single cell lipo charger. So this is this is the XT60 that we saw earlier. And you had something to do with RC. Look at that. So that's the XT60 connector there. It's a good high current connector. And 4S and 3S. That must be the input voltage. Got an on-off soft power switch here. 4.2 or 4.35 volt charger. So yeah, this is a this is a charger for lithium, um, single cell lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries. And I think what makes this special, if you want to take a look here, it says uh, 4.2 slash 4.35 volts. There is a new standard of um, lithium polymer batteries for RC planes and stuff where it runs at a higher voltage. They called LIHV, means uh, lithium high voltage. Uh, basically, instead of topping out at 4.2 volts, it tops out at 4.35 volts. The chemistry is slightly different to allow that. And um, yeah, these things are made to charge those for little tiny drones, which is interesting because I've been trying to bug Banggood to send me a little tiny drone. Might have to end up buying one with my own money when it goes on sale pretty soon. But that's going to be an interesting thing because the circuitry is all underneath. So we can actually take a take a good look at that and see how it's deriving its voltages. But I expect it's going to be something like two, uh, just, just going to be buck converters in series or in parallel with each of these channels. That's pretty cool though. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, a starter learning kit for LilyPad. So I believe LilyPad is a Arduino type thing. Let me just put this aside. And uh, it focuses on wearable electronics. And yeah, this is, so there's a whole bunch of sort of felt pads in this kit. And here we go. That would be the Arduino lily pad. So I've actually not had a lily pad in my hands before. Oh, and there's a little, um, that's a needle threader if you haven't seen that before. Lilypad Arduino. I'm not sure. Is this legitimate Arduino? It's hard for me to tell at this point. I've never actually seen a lily pad. But the the deal with this is that there are like outputs as normal. Should be an 18 mega 328U4. Yep, that's what that's on there. And they have these pads broken out in little holes. And these little holes, you're supposed to wind conductive thread through it and you can actually make wearable electronics. Now I'm not sure, there's a needle there. I'm not sure if this is the conductive thread though. I'm actually not sure how this works at all. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is a whole kit. So you've got the battery box. So you slide a, like a 2032 or something like that into these little holders. And here must be, that's a little push button. Very nice. And here is oh, a little switch, a little uh, slide switch. You've got these little LEDs. Very nice. Looks like a buzzer. Looks like an RGB LED. You could probably tell it's RGB by the three, yeah, RG and B and the positive. It's got four connect connectors there. Then you got a little, this must be the conductive thread here. And it's on a bobbin for a sewing machine. Bobbin, am I saying that right? Not sure. I'm not sure what this is. It says S, it's a three pin package. Looks like a sensor, optical sensor maybe. That's really cool. I think this is conductive. It's very silvery. I'll have to take a look at that with the multimeter. What do we got here? Oh, some more LEDs, orange in color this time. 
And here's another battery holder with a battery included. I won't tell uh, Canada Post about the lithium coin cell in there. There's another one. So we've got a couple of battery holders. This is a cool kit. We've got a bigger battery box here with uh, these take double A batteries. We've got a USB lead, very likely for programming the Arduino. Just USB micro to USB A. We got a couple of crock clips, very likely for prototyping. And we've got another toggle switch. Well, lots of toggle switches on this. Cool. So I guess I'm going to be making some wearable stuff. Hmm. That's got me thinking. That could be pretty cool. I think one of my podcast guests, Stephen, the um, RC dad, he uh, I think he used something similar to the LilyPad form factor Arduino to make one of his um, one of his projects work. That's going to be interesting. I've never played with one of these before. Hmm. Can we make some sort of Christmassy thing? I wonder. That's going to be interesting. Well, thanks so much for sending all this stuff. Let's give some of this stuff a, a test. All right, well, let's start off by uh, saying that um, this crimper is actually a brand name crimper. I'm not sure, yeah, Soulstar Tech. Uh, this is for ethernet cables. And um, yeah, I was thinking uh, it was more for like coaxial cable, but it's, it's all for like ethernet and phone cables this is, and it's a pro pro tool i think i saw on bnh it was like 80 bucks us so yeah this thing is uh le fancy so that's pretty cool um i don't have the little uh tombstone connectors i don't, I don't know what they're really called but the the ends um, but i might get some because i do have a bunch of ethernet cable here i've got this thing where i can't throw out cables so I might just get some of those connectors and use Ethernet cables in my future um, Arduino and microcontroller projects. So that should be pretty interesting. The uh, LilyPad deserves its own video, so that's not going to happen today. But let's see if we can get a couple of the things working here. So let's check this um, lithium battery charger. I'm just going to plug in this... Uh, this power supply here into my power bar. Oh no, it doesn't fit. What do I unplug? If I unplug this, what happens? Nothing. Good. Good to know. All right, and this should fire right up or explode in a cloud of smoke. There we go. Fires right up. We have a uh, 12.3 volts available to this unit and if we turn these things I wonder if it has an a detection I may have a battery for this hold on let me just make sure they're all in non high voltage bring my box of battery stuff there we go there's a battery that should fit hopefully it's the correct polarity if not then we will have a cloud of smoke I'll go in these this upper corner here doesn't seem to be doing anything. Hmm. Oh, 3S? Nah, uh, I don't know. Well, I guess it's going to get its own video. This one could be too low. Maybe we could try another one. There's a, another more differenter one. No, nope, there's little LEDs there, but they don't seem to be doing anything. Oh, wait, there's an on-off button. Oh, my God. That was stupid. There we go. That one is now charging. Okay, perfect. This thing does work. Now, the reason why I wanted to start with that is so we can check the uh, hour meter. I'm not sure how it works. I just want to see it working 
The only thing is, I may have to update you guys, you know, after an hour to see if it has moved. So I'm just going to plug this in here. I'm just going to actually just jam the wires into here. This is the ground here. And this is the power. Let's see, 999950. These are stiff wires. Oh. Oh, it's not a, it's not an hour meter. It cycles. I don't know if you can see that. Every time you apply power, it cycles. Oh boy, can we go up? What's gonna happen now? Nine, 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 nine. Zero, sweet. Oh, that is cool. That is gonna be a cool teardown if we can get into this without breaking it. Um, if we can't get into it without breaking it, we're just gonna have to see if we can get another one on eBay to tear down, even a non-functional one. That That is pretty cool. Okay, so that's nice. I don't think we're gonna bother powering up the Arduino because it looks like it's still sealed, so it should have a blinky on it. The SDR is a little bit complex for a quick video, so it will get its own video as well, uh, on top of the fact that I actually don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to it. Um, this Rover, so I was told that it might have the correct software for this Rover. A little bit of how the sausage is made, I actually just spoke to another maker just now. And I happen to have lithium cells these days. So I can pop this in here. There we go. Pop one of these cheap Banggood lithium cells. If you haven't seen the video on it, don't buy them. They are garbage. All right. Something's powering up. There's a smiley face on the LED matrix here. See that? There's some LEDs here. Oh, there's some fancy LEDs underneath there. Does it do anything? I'm not sure. Button one, button two, button three. This looks like a reset. Hmm. not quite sure how this is supposed to work and this is what happens when you try things live oh geez geez it's doing something does it just take a long time to boot it moved forward for a second there This seems kind of loosey-goosey in there. Oh yeah, it's just a terminal block. Oh. I see. Is it blocking these sensors? No. What happens if I block both of them? Hmm. Okay, so it does have some sort of line following built into it. That's pretty cool. Hang on a second. Got the printed piece of paper from the uh, Chinesium line following robot kit. Hopefully this works. <laughs> it works. Wow, actually, it's working better than the Chinese kit. Well, that's pretty cool. 
and the moment some of you have really been waiting for, lighting up of some LEDs. Got my meter in diode check mode here, oh there we go, that one's lit. Yeah, they're just standard red LEDs, 1.62 volts forward, but they look really neat. They look like they would go really well in some projects where this could be exposed. That's pretty cool. Yep, 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 yep. Very nice. Check these guys too. They're like the uh, the older style red LEDs too. They're not as bright. They're very good for indicating. Okay, let's check these uh, tiny, the blue-green. Wow, these are, this is lighting up, but it's extremely dim. Getting next to nothing in terms of current in that one. Don't know if you'll be able to see this one side on. So these, yeah, these are so old school. They barely light at all. Wow, 1.63, yeah, they light very dimly. Uh, in my current lighting situation, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them at all. Wow, these are really... There's the old... Old technology LEDs, they barely light at all. That's going to be cool to play with in um, in areas where it is dark and you want to keep it dark so yeah they have their use especially these guys in little plastic housings I feel like I can even just pull them out of there if I really wanted to maybe I should model something like this for the 3d printer but anyways yeah LEDs always nice and this lovely pile of stuff makes up today's mailbag. A special thank you to another maker for sending me this. I really need to get working on the stuff he sent me the first time and I'll probably be playing with this stuff sort of like mixed in at the same time. To thank him though, I put a link to one of his videos in the description and in the pinned comment. Let's go to that video, watch the whole thing, thumbs up and leave a comment. And while you're there, you might as well subscribe. Thanks everyone for watching.